Hello there! My name is Philip, and you might know that this channel is primarily focused on tutorials related to the Godot engine. But let's try something a little different this time. You might remember if you followed my tutorial on creating a space shooter with 3D models that I recommended Blender as the perfect companion to Godot because, like Godot, it's free, open source, and easy to use. But how do you actually export models from Blender for import into Godot, and what should you be careful about? We'll find out right away. If we want to add a 3D model to our project in Godot, and it's something more complex than basic shapes like a cube or sphere that can be easily created in Godot without using external tools, we basically have two options. First, we create a bare model in Blender and add materials later in Godot. Or, we create a fully textured model in Blender, including materials, and import it into Godot as a whole. In the mentioned tutorial, I mainly focused on the first option and demonstrated how easily we can define such materials as Godot resources and share them among different models. This time, let's try it differently. We'll do as much as possible in Blender and observe how Godot handles the result. So let me open Blender. By the way, as you can see, I'm already using Blender 4.0, but what I'm going to show works perfectly in Blender 3 as well. And I have this model here. I've created this modular ship that I plan to incorporate into my game as one of the boss enemies at the end of level. I believe it consists of at least 15 pieces that will scatter in all directions as debris upon the destruction of the ship. As we can see, it's just a model lacking materials. As known, a good material is not just a texture. It is defined by additional properties such as normal map, displacement, ambient occlusion, metallic shining, roughness, etc. How are we going to utilize all of this? By the way, this video is not about modeling such a ship from the initial cube. Here we will only focus on materials and exporting. However, I'm well aware that a low-poly modeling tutorial can be beneficial for many people, so I will definitely return to this topic in one of the future videos. After all, if I, someone who doesn't consider himself a graphic artist by any means, can create a simple model like this ship, Anyone can learn to do it. So, how about those materials? If we don't require our models to have complex, hand-drawn textures, we can easily make do with freely available materials, of which there is an enormous variety today. As an example, I've chosen the website sharetextures.com, from which we'll download several metallic materials for our spaceship. We'll prefer those published under a CC0 license, which essentially means we can use them in our project without worries, even if we plan to sell the final game. So let's click to Assets and Textures, and let's find the Metal category and find something that will be suitable for the spaceship. How about we start with this metallic blue? It looks pretty cool, so let's wait for it. Uh, it seems to be preparing some kind of preview or the, uh, the archive to download and 1k textures uh, will be probably good enough for our model because we plan to use it in the top view with um, models uh, scaled down so any uh, details wouldn't be visible anyway so let's click download it's being downloaded and it should be already there, let's find it. Okay, here is the zip archive. I will open that. Uh, sorry about the check UI, extract. Okay, and the textures are right here. So we have the textures downloaded and now we need to create a material from them in Blender. 
This task may not be entirely trivial for everyone if it were necessary to manually insert each file and connect them in a functional graph. Fortunately, Blender can make this step for us uh, quite easy, as it provides a very useful add-on called Node Wrangler. Let's switch back to Blender and let's make sure the add-on is activated. Edit Preferences, Add-ons and I will just type Node here and it seems it's not. So I will click here and now Node Wrangler is active. We can close the window. Now let's demonstrate the whole trick. I'll select the model or the body part of that and click the material pane. I think it is here and click new to add a new material. Okay, here it is. Uh, let's make sure that the material is of the principled BSDF type, which it is. So I'll switch to shading page and click on the principal BSDF node right here. Uh, now what we have to do is to press Ctrl Shift T and the dialog opens. It is important to mention for Mac users that it is Ctrl on their platform as well, not Command as usual. So the dialog opened where we will find our downloaded material. It should be here in downloads and it was something metallic blue. Right, here it is. And I will select all files and press this button, Principal Texture Setup. Let's do it and voila! It seems that Blender automatically created the entire graph and connected the textures to the correct sockets. How does Blender do it? The trick lies in the settings of the Node Wrangler add-on, which we can find here, Edit Preferences, and let's expand this, and here it is, Edit Tags for Auto Texture Detection in Principle BSDF Setup. If we click that, we can see that there are patterns to detect texture types based on file names. These patterns can be edited which is very useful if our source material uses different names than what this add-on expects. Let's click, uh, let's close that. By the way, for the material to look good on our model, it's necessary to properly define the UV map, um, which is used by Godot or another game engine to display the material on individual faces. Blender offers a simple one-click solution we will switch to UV editing and uh, select UV and Smart UV Project. If we don't intend to further refine our map, simply we can simply click OK and we are done. However, it's sometimes worth setting a small gap between individual islands in case we want to later shuffle and optimize the material layout. For this, we will use the Island Margin property, which we can set to, for example, 0 0.01 and click OK. OK, and it seems that the islands are a little separated from each other. With this, we assigned the material to one module of the ship. But what if we wanted to use the same material for more parts? The solution is very simple. We'll use the Link Materials feature. So I will switch here back to the layout, uh, layout view and let's activate the materials on this. And let me just enlarge it a little bit and how we can do it now. So I'll press dot on the numpad to focus on the model. And let's, for example, assign the same material to these windows. So we'll select them, then hold shift and select the original component with the already assigned material. And then we use Ctrl L and select link materials. And here it is. Material is shared across these two components. We will repeat the entire process to obtain and use materials for the other modules. I'll do this quickly to save time.
Okay, the model is ready, so we can proceed to export. By the way, uh, the combination of these metals, materials is, I would say, questionable and it's definitely not a state-of-the-art model, but the point uh, of the demonstration was to show how we can apply multiple materials with uh, many parameters to the model and export them. So uh, yeah, I will definitely use something a bit better in my game when I have more time to do it. Anyway, as usual, we have several options, which with the most advantages undoubtedly would be the format uh, GLTF 2.0. Let's find it here in File, Export and GLTF 2.0 here. So um, why this one specifically? GLTF 2.0 is fully supported by Godot both as the text-based GLTF format and the binary GLB. This format is also recommended on the official documentation uh, pages of the Godot engine, so we will certainly not make a mistake by choosing it and opting for the default binary GLB format. While the text-based GLTF could be used, it doesn't offer any advantages <coughs> over the binary format and in addition, the resulting file would be much larger. So, before clicking on export GLTF 2.0, it's good to make sure that the exported file will contain everything we expect. This includes, above all, data, mesh, and apply modifiers, which is particularly beneficial when using modifiers such as the mirror modifier during modeling. If we don't check this, in Godot, we would only see half of the mirrored part of the model. Of course, we can use apply on all modifiers and then there wouldn't be any issues with the export, even if we didn't set this checkbox. However, sometimes we want to keep the modifiers active for later improvements to the model, so it's definitely worth knowing this procedure as well. <coughs> By the way, it's true that Godot allows importing directly the native blend format. This process essentially involves the background export to GLTF, so it saves only a few mouse clicks. On the other hand, this process can speed up working with the model if we are making additional changes in Blender and want to see them in Godot as quickly as possible. It's up to you which approach suits you better. So, Let's select uh, the target folder, like this one, and export this model as GLTF 2.0. Importing a GLB file into Godot is easy. We'll simply drag it into the appropriate folder, either directly in the Godot File Explorer panel, let's just open it here, or in the file manager of your operating systems, which means uh, this application on Windows, for example. Godot immediately de detects the change and imports the file. You may notice that this process automatically extracts the textures contained in the GLB file. So, let's prepare the folder to import the file into, and I will find it in the file explorer, here it is, and drag it to the models folder. Now it's being imported. Let's wait for it, okay, and here it is, and as I mentioned, the textures had been extracted as well. If we are content with using the model exactly as it was exported from Blender, there is no need for any further setup. We can simply drag uh, the GLB file into the target scene, uh, turning it into a child node in that scene. Let's demonstrate that. I will switch to main, for example, which is the main scene of the game, and we will drag this fast2fo GLB file to root. Okay, and here it is. Here we can see it, and it looks exactly like uh, we created it in Blender. Just don't mind these jet flames, it's uh, <laughs> displayed on top of the previously used uh, player ship. Let me just move it a little bit further from that, and the model is right there. 
okay it seems I made some mistake with the material for the wings but um, that's because as you might have noticed in the uh, fast video of adding new materials I did some adjustments with the graph and probably did them wrong but don't mind that um, all other materials should be displayed correctly alternately we can right click and choose new inherited scene right here and a completely new scene with only this model has been created uh, this approach is more suitable if we plan to add more than one copy of the model to the scene and configure additional parameters for each copy separately as I demonstrated in the tutorial for creating a 2.5T space shooter. And we can also see that all the parts have been created there as separated meshes, so we can then work with them in our script to apply any required logic. However, in cases where the default import settings are not sufficient, we have the option to adjust various details before the model is added to the project. Godot offers several ways to achieve this, with some of the easiest being the import dock and advanced import settings. To use the import dock, we'll simply select the GLB file here and switch to the import tab at the scene uh, panel. As we can see, this panel is used, to, uh, used for basic customization of the model. For example, we can change the root node uh, from the default Node 3D to a specialized class like Static Body 3D, Area 3D, or and so on. Alternatively, we have the option to enable or disable various properties and features that Godot will generate for us. As for uh, the advanced import settings, it can be invoked either by clicking the Advanced button in the import dock or by double-clicking the GLB file. This opens a more advanced interface for working with the internal nodes of the model, materials, meshes, and so on. Additionally, we can extract materials and create independent resources from them, which can then be easily shared among multiple models. So, as we can see, uh, the model has been important into the project without any issues and is correctly displayed in the 3D editor including all materials I mean without the wings but I already mentioned that and we can easily fix that but by going back to Blender and creating the material again in the scene panel where it is here as I said we can observe the internal structure giving us the ability to reference individual nodes in the script and perform any operations our game may require. Thank you for your attention and I hope this video was helpful for you. As always, I'll appreciate every like, share, subscribe and so on. Take care and good luck with your game projects.